Hi, everyone. This is Elizabeth Wagner, also known as Ralphira Leodon from the Midnight D&D podcast. Join us this Friday at midnight and every Friday to uncover Ralphira's dark secrets that I'm sure you are all waiting to know. Thank you once again and join us on 91.5 WJHS and hear brand new episodes of Midnight D&D. Check us out online at WJHS91.5.org. Now, enjoy this week's Midnight D&D. Welcome everybody back to Midnight D&D Episode A. I am your host and Dungeon Master, Dalton Heiser. And now we have a special section that me and my cast have decided on putting into this beginning segment of the show, and it's going to be the shout-out. So, Crollo, take it away. Uh, today, I'm giving a shout-out to Riley Lombard. He was able to find me in public, so we're giving him a shout-out. He also wanted me to say something. Let me just... D&D all the way. All right, recap time. So basically what last episode was all about was getting items around, getting some gear, getting missions ready. And now I do believe everybody has gathered in front of the hospital. They're about to go in. Krolo's still a pant, uh, still a plant. Pant? You're still pants. Yeah, he's still a plant. Uh, and I do believe that's, that's about all that happened last episode. That was a major importance. Hank punched a tree. Oh, yeah. Uh, that. Yeah, oh, that. Vincent cried. Vincent cried for the first time, so that was sad. We split up. But, uh, all right. Time to begin. Everybody's going to the hospital. Everybody's there. I do believe that Finn and uh, Hank were at the shop with Vincent. And Vincent snapped them into view of the hospital, at least. Or wait, no, did he? Did he make you guys the, walk? I think we're at the he entrance. There. You guys are at the entrance with them? Yes, girl. Plant. Leaf rustling noise Ray added in. So, uh... No. <laughs> you guys ready to enter? Yeah. Roll initiatives! Sure. Uh, I didn't get a clear roll because it landed check on check for the traps thing. first at 12. the doorway? Six. Twelve. Six. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Oh, four. <laughs> you said, what'd you get right? Six. Six. And you got a twelve? I summoned 32 black mambas. You're keeping you're keeping track of all these initiatives, right? Yeah, I am. 32 black mambas. <laughs> Ralph, you're going in first. Ralph, <laughs> take it back. Oh, I'm Ralph. Yeah, okay. Ralph Ira, you're going in first. Uh, then Crollo, Bran- about to Brando. <laughs> Do it again. So it's Ralph Ira, Crollo, Finn, Arezio, Hank. That is the order of the initiative in the 32 black mambas. Because I figure that's what Crollo's gonna ask me. Yes, Crollo. And if you say plant, I will smite you. <laughs> that's what I thought. I was actually gonna say something that just made me laugh, though. <laughs> it's funny how I'm entering right behind her, considering I'm in her bag. Coincidence? I, I think not. not. I wonder why I made a plant roll initiative. May I perform <laughs> my action? I get going. I would get. like to leave the bag outside the hospital. <laughs> Just as you're about to do that, the plant begins to grow back into Crollo. Oh, thank God. Crollo's back. It's, it's not been eight hours, but you're welcome. Thank goodness I took Aww. it off. But he has turned your backpack into a baby newborn. <laughs> you're now carrying him like a young infantile children. Yes. Child. I'm taller than her. I'll be carrying her around. What do I see? You see an empty desk, some ripped open filing cabinets around you. It looks pretty dark in there, well, at least for the standards of people that can see in the dark. Uh, there's a certain smell. If you would roll on it, you could probably guess the smell. You've smelt it before. And basically, there's just a bunch of paper strewn on the ground. You see blood stained onto the walls. There's two hallways separating this one big circular desk in the middle. And down the hallways, you can see probably about what you would have supposed to be around six to seven rooms. Each side, uh, you see A wing, B wing, and then you would assume that maybe further down there's a C or even a, more than that. That's about all you get. What is our purpose here? I cannot explain that to you. Vincent didn't even explain it. You were just sent there to do something. There is no direct objective. I would like to search the desk. All right, you'd like to search the desk? Roll a search? search? Yes. Yes, Carlo. I would like to do anything but that. No. <laughs> I'm pulling away from the backpack. 19. 
She got a 19, bud. You, you can roll and see if you can do it. If not... That's spot. It would be strength. That's to a search. Search, whatever. Yeah. It'd be it would have to be roll for strength, right? Yeah. Roll and see if you can get that 19. <laughs> she carries you. <laughs> like, Crit fail. Like a, like a child. She carries you like this. She hunches over as you're trying to pull back as she lifts you like a bodybuilder and begins to carry you towards the desk, which then she opens up and starts the search. You find a map layout of the hospital. Wonderful. If you'd like to take a look at it, you can. Absolutely. Uh, you notice that it's all in what would be said is common speak, speech and writing. Uh, you're looking at it. You notice that there's three floors to the uh, hospital. There's a you're on the first floor, the main floor. There's a floor above that, and then there's an attic, right. or what would be like a storage area. You see that there is the two main wings that you're looking at. There is about six rooms on each side, and then there's a stairwell that leads you up to the second floor, which on the paper you see like a uh, pregnancy wing, and then you can see like a uh, quarantined area, and then you can see like the ICU, so like intensive care and whatnot. And no one is here, correct? No, it's completely desolate. Like there is not a sign of life in the place. Okay, group. I suppose and propose. I suppose and propose. I suppose and propose. We go to the maternity ward and maybe see if we can find any past bookings or reviews of the vampire baby. I it was think, just born, but... I didn't think we were... Uh, yeah, yeah, you guys can do that. I think she's the only one that's entered with him. But I guess the door's kind of... Just, it's open. I mean, it's, it's a run-down, broken building. Oh, and I guess if you wanted a real objective, Vincent just wants it checked out to see if it can be cleaned and remade back into a hospital that works for the people. All right, um, I have the tumor with me. Who the else is coming? <laughs> the tumor. <laughs> Ouch. The blue-haired if she, tumor. If she's attached to me, does that mean when I teleport, she teleports too? Mm-hmm. Tundra. <laughs> Tundra. <laughs> Wind blowing sounds. <sighs> All right, so uh, Ralph, Ira, and Curler are now in the Tundra. You guys just see Curler go and snap out of existence like... Vincent or Maximus would have done. Are you guys? Are you guys in three? You guys sitting yeah. outside like a bunch of scared little kids. I'll uh, go in. I'd love to follow them. Of the abandoned haunted house. <laughs> so, they're just sitting there like, oh no, they're going to kill me. I figured since we rolled initiative, we were following behind them. No, they they went first and moved in. You guys are now taking your own strides to move in. That's why I asked. Go, you guys. Uh, uh, I do believe it's. Finn, Orazio, then Hank. So, Finn, uh, what are you doing? I'm going to walk in. You're, you're walking in. You see about the same exact thing that I've explained to her. Am I back okay. in the hospital? No, you guys are still in the tundra. Take me up. back. No. I will drop you. Go ahead. I'll just go back without you. <laughs> Was that the sound of you drop? Into the snow. You just got completely enveloped by snow. Thank you for that sound effect. Don't you dare. Your, two, your fingers are too cold. You can't <laughs> snap. <laughs> I can't make that call. Our fingers too cold. His fingers are too cold. Yes. Well, because you said that, now we're both stuck. <laughs> well, I'm gonna wait for I'm gonna wait for a Razio and Hank to come in and see if they want to go down one. There's other ways to snap besides with your fingers. It's not a snap. It's a pop, snap, crackle, whatever. You know? how, how far away is she from me? Right so next like, to me? Yeah, you guys. She just went. And then, like, turn <laughs> How much health do you have? How much health do I have? Seven. Mm-hmm. That's it? Yep. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. Have you been rolling your head? We've though? got like triple your health. Oh, uh, yeah. it's because you guys, she didn't heal herself for the level up. Uh, heal yourself. You leveled up. Yeah, everybody got healed. There you go. Ooh. Your health is 14. So, all right, so Finn, you're walking into the hospital. Arazio and Hank, are you guys following? Yes, of course. Arazio and Hank are following in. You guys see the exact same description of what I told Ralph Ira. You guys see the dark, desolate, abandoned hospital. Ooh, it's so scary. Yes, Aurazio? Uh I'd like to put in my poison gem slot into my axe since I haven't done that yet, apparently. Uh, I, I thought it was acid. I don't remember what. I said acid. You said acid. I, acid. I thought it was poison. My yeah, bad. go ahead. So yeah, acid. I'll just do that. So now put in the notes that your axe does on a crit of 19 to 20 augmented crit. It does 1d4 of acid. Sweet. So do you guys just want to start from wing A and just go from there? Yeah. Sure. Are you not going to question that we're just gone? No. No, I mean, you're like, you're no idea where, where you are. You just do the Vincent thing. You're just like, yeah. We've no. been traveling with you long enough. We're, we just, we're kind of used to your antics. They don't care about you. You're all right. Hey, God. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. I'm right. talking to Hector. You're talking. 
character? Yes. The God of Tacos. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can say no, that. No, it's, um, it's, he's the God of tyranny. Uh, That's my faith. Anyway, ah. God, if you're there, it's cold and I'm not a frost elf. Yes. I and cast Agnor Scorch. The baby bursts into flames. Uh, so you're attacking her? It's it's a cone around me. A fire. I'm two feet away from you. You said I'm too cold. I'm warming up. <sighs> roll a reflex. Take Charizard you're away. You gotta roll a reflex too. You gotta try to outroll her reflex. My reflex is an yeah. eight, so. So 18. She just has to- my reflex? It'd be, uh... Your reflex saving throw. Actually, sorry. Yeah, no, you you got it. You're good. Uh, I shouldn't have even had you roll. It was a DC save on a spell. I'm just gonna roll to see how much it would have done. 12? <gasps> I would have died from that. Oh, no, I would have two. I would have done two. 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 All okay. right, so... Warm enough to snap yet. Well, I'll get back to that here in a second. Uh, you were praying to your god, Hector. Hector. It's actually Hexter. Hexter? Yeah, it has an X, not a C, but it doesn't make any sense. Hector. Hector sounds better. I'll, I'll say Hexter. Hexter. Yeah, that's what it says. So, you're praying to your god, a tyranny? Yes. You have to have a deity of your alignment in 3.5. Your your god's very pleased that you prayed to him, finally, for the first time. In forever. <laughs> Alright. And he, uh, you feel warmth starting to inflate like kind of go into your body it kind of begins to fill you uh you would notice that it almost appears as if there's a glow of like some aura or or, like a wing shadow behind her now you are now for you are now for the next 20 minutes got the abilities of a angel of tyranny yeah good good use of that in the tantra it's lit she she literally is just covered in flames right now she's (laughs) she's covered in fire (sighs) Cut out the it's lit, please. No, I like it. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm going back to the. I'm going back to the hospital. Not so fast. Can I grab his arm? Yeah, you're good. Reflex, okay. reflex. Fine. I want to dodge. Wouldn't that be a grapple? There's. Uh, yeah, you're only grapple if you're out or grapple the theme. Uh, where's where's the grapple? Hold up. Oh crap. So you're uh, grapple. Um. Okay. Well, I got a date. So. <laughs> so yeah. So he misses you and he goes. And it's gone. You reappear back in the hospital. You're in the tundra. What would you like to do? You can do basically about the same thing as him. It's just more of a fiery explosion of you disappearing that decimates everything. (sighs) Aggressive curse word. All right. So you, there's a gigantic explosion of fire, which melts all the snow and even stops the snow from falling. It literally created a gigantic pillar of flames that went up into the clouds and dispersed them. And now it feels like summer in the tundra. You reappear back in the hospital in this awesome form, visage looking pure power of tyranny. You see him, he's standing there like, uh, <laughs> Grillo, go ahead. What's up, Demon Lord? Can we walk down A Wing now? Uh, Grillo, you're splitting off from the group and going down left or right side, A Wing, B Wing. Which way are they going? They're, I don't know which way are you guys going. A Wing. They're going to A Wing. The B-wing. group is going to A Wing. You're going to B Wing. Grillo splits the B Wing. You guys are now going down your own personal sides. Uh, are you guys searching rooms? Curlo, guys? Yeah. How about sure. they have their turns? Yeah. Uh, they already came in. They walked in. Yeah. Uh, that was their action. You guys are, he. he's basically kind of just pushing you guys down that way anyways. I mean, you guys have the choice of not following him and going with Curlo, but. Can I fly? Kind of. Yeah, I would allow you to, but you're in a building. I would like to hover down the hallway. And make sure there's no traps using trap sense. You don't have hover. You have wings. They're wings. I, I know, but you can't. Okay, flap. You're gonna lightly. flap your wings like a hummingbird. Yes. No, no. It's either you fly, you're going for a fly, or you're going to a walk. I'm not giving you a hover. Fine, we'll walk and use trap sense. You're gonna use trap sense. There's no traps. Okay. There's none. Well, it was a good notion. Mommy, stop putting your fist on the table. I hear every bump. My bad. You're good. Yes, Grollo. I call Shisui. I whistle. He's no longer your familiar. I know, but he's still my animal companion. Whoopsie. Maybe if you sat in the chair right, that wouldn't happen. I can't do the... <laughs> <laughs> I'll just add in a whistle sound. I, I do the dad whistle to call Shisui. Moving on. All right, so, yeah, Shisui comes in. He's just chilling on your shoulder. Oh. <laughs> Can you help me search this area? Oh. <laughs> Yes or no? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shrugs. 
car. <laughs> he goes, he goes, car. That was a bird shrug. He's just looking at you. Anyway, just just search around this area. Tell me what you see, and then I'm going to crouch down into like a meditating position. Uh, all right, so you're meditating. And, and cast uh, detect undead. I want to know if there's any vampires around here. You do sense the prince, uh, the presence of multiple undead, and you also sense the presence of one vampire. You cannot tell where they're at, but you know within the vicinity of around about oh, thirty. 40 feet away from you, there's undead and vampires. Oh, one vampire. She sweet denotes that once he comes back and sits back on your shoulder, that caw, 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 which in a layman's term for crow or raven means, hey, there's a bunch of zombies up ahead. You better not go in any of the rooms. Thank you, she sweet. I'm going in every room. Uh, Crow's doing his thing. What are you guys doing? I still say we go to the maternity ward and check the records. Yeah, you guys uh, just go plow through this, huh? My original plan was kind of like just to stay back, not go anywhere. Like, so it's like there's the entrance, right? And then you can split off into wherever. All right, bye. Hank, you coming with? No, thanks. You have fun looking at baby records. Finn? I'm staying in A Wing. Later. All right, so Ralph Iris split from the group and is now heading up to the maternity ward. This feels like a game of Clue. <laughs> What was worse than a game of Clue? <laughs> All right, so Raphira, you're going to the maternity ward. You're walking down the hallway. As of current, you don't notice anything out of the ordinary. The doors are, some doors are open, broken, strewn about. There's dirt and debris and bottles and whatnot in there. Uh, as you get to the stairwell, once again, nothing seems out of the ordinary. It just looks like this place has been abandoned for decades. It's not been used, no sign of life. Maybe like some insects and whatnot, but that's about it. Um, as you get up to the top floor, the first section to your left is where the maternity ward is off the top of the stairwell. And you said you're going into the maternity ward to look through the records? Correct. All right, so you can make a search while you're doing that. Finn, Razio, and Hank, you guys are still in the A-wing. I yes. crit failed my search. <clears throat> she got a paper cut. <laughs> 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 you stub your toe on the door. No, she's getting something worse than the paper cut. Oh. Uh, all right, so Finn, Razio, Hank, what are you guys doing? You guys searching rooms? You guys just chilling yeah. in the hallway? I'm going to search rooms. I'm chilling, kind of like a scout. Right, so there's I'll follow Finn into the hallway. You keep watch, Razio. All right, so you guys are going into room one, and you're going with Finn, correct, Hank? Hank, are you joining me in room one? Sure. All right, so uh, Hank has been going to room one. You guys see used medical equipment that is rusted over from years of being just dampened on and whatnot. You notice that there's files and books and records and uh, there's empty pill bottles and jars left inside of the cabinets. There's broken glass strewn about. There's plants and vines and insects all over the place. What are you guys looking at? What are you guys looking for? This doesn't look like fun. No, not really. What do you say we do? Um... There doesn't seem anything out of the ordinary, at least. Just spines and all that, and I guess we can go to the next room. Good idea. Razio, let's check the next room. All right, so, Hank, are you leaving the room? Yes. All right, so as soon as Hank walks out of the room, then you're walking up behind him, the door slams shut and locks itself. You're now locked in room one. Finn and Razio, uh, yeah, sorry, Hank and Razio, you guys see this happen. Um, guys... They cannot hear you now. You notice that the room, even though it was just lit, is from one side beginning to grow darker and darker, closing like closing into your position. As it hits the window, the broken glass where sunlight was coming in, it starts to begin to block out the sunlight. Yes, Hank? Well, that's odd. The door just closed on him. That's suspicious. <laughs> Should we open it? Yeah, let's try to open it. Or we can just leave him behind. No, we're going to open it. All right, fine. DM, we're going to try and open the door. All right, go ahead and try. Okay. I'm rolling strength, or do I have to roll at all? Well, I'll roll strength. Okay, is this door invincible? Let's Hold just it. say there's uh, forces keeping the door closed at all costs. Do you have to Thanks will? the info. Oh, I'll hear in a second. Well, I rolled a 21. Soft 21. So, Hank, you grab a hold of the door handle and begin to just crank on this door handle. I mean, like, he's putting his entire weight, all this muscle that he can. You begin to kind of feel it 
crack and creak as you're pulling on it as if it was going to open. Finally, it opens fully, and as you open it up, Finn's nowhere to be found. This place is spooky. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Where did Finn go? (laughs) Finn, as you kind of begin to come to, something has happened to you to where you had like felt like as if you had passed out or fallen asleep, and now you're coming out of that sleep. Uh, As you do, you find yourself strapped to like a table or a chair that you notice that there's two people in the room with you. One is someone that resembles a doctor, and the other one's one that resembles a nurse. Nurse and you Joy? That there's maybe a third person that's sitting on, like, a table similar to yours. The person's screaming in agony and pain as you just see the doctor's arm going back and forth. This looks like a standard medical procedure of someone having a leg amputated. Who, who are you guys? Where am I? You try to feel your, like, it sounds like when you're talking and you try to feel yourself speak, your voice kind of sounds distorted and echoed. So when I dream at night. Basically. You're trying to talk, but your voice sounds like it's not carrying or catching any substance or volume. They, the nurse slowly turns to you and as she does, you notice that something's wrong with her. She has no eyes. You notice that as she holds up her palms, the, her eyes are in the centers of her palms. You notice that as she smiles at you, she has large fangs as she begins to walk closer to you and closer to you. She has a syringe in her hand like this. The vaccine. <laughs> it's, the <laughs> it's the Pipsers vaccine. Can I roll a search to see what else is around me? Yeah, because you're rolling a search, you're rolling a spot or a perception. You can roll that. You got a nat 20. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, Finn, you, you're looking around, and it looks almost exactly the same as the room you were in, except for it looks like it's not broken down and destroyed. It looks like it's almost brand new, never barely used, a surgical room. Okay. Um, I don't know what I can do. I mean, like, I'm strapped in, and... You can try to strength out. Uh, you can roll a will. If you roll a will then something good will happen. If you roll a bad will, something bad will happen. I will attempt a will. So it's a will saving throw. Yep. Something good happens. Twenty. So as you struggle, so as you struggle, Finn, you notice that the bindings begin to weaken almost. The darkness begins to separate as it grows lighter and lighter in the room. The doctor turns to look at you and his face is mangled and distorted and twisted in a very maniacal and malicious way. Uh, as you start to yell, you guys, uh, Razio, Hank, you need to make hearing checks. All right. What about me? Because you're in the second wing. You're across the right. entire section of the solid wall. What if I roll high enough? No. Like, Maybe she so you hear it. Or she... How about me? I'm above uh, them. That is just be a perception. Oh, okay. Well, oh. I'm above them, right? Mm-hmm. Do you want me to roll? No, okay. there's a solid cement or listen. Floor ceiling above it. It would be a listen. Oh, there's a listen. Yeah, there's a listen. Okay. There's no perception. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. I got a 17. <laughs> 18. You guys definitely hear yelling coming from down the hall, and it sounds like Finn. All right, let's go investigate. Let's do it. That was ominous. What does Finn screaming sound like? <laughs> that was my screaming. <laughs> that was my screaming. But yeah, no, so you guys are running down the hall. And you guys come to the very last room, and as you open the door, you notice that there is a table there with another body on the table who's missing a leg, but it looks like it's been there for a really long time. This body has literally dried up and turned, like, mummified. What genjutsu is this? Thanks for filling my nightmares. Well, this is the entire hospital. Don't worry, this is only the beginning. You're like, (laughs) there's either some time stuff going on or... (laughs) Um, you notice that Finn is strapped down to the table with leather with leather restraints. And as you guys had come into the room, a syringe filled with some side of the substance was dropped and cracked and splattered against the ground, as well as a surgical saw clattered to the side, as if there had been people standing in there holding them. Basically, what's happening is that, have you guys ever heard of a death echo? No. It's basically said to be a spirit that's trapped in a certain place or time of its death, and 
if another person's spirit resided there, they're pulled into the death echo. So that's basically what Finn just experienced is that he experienced the death of the man that's on the table. Mm, mm. But he was going to get hurt by that echo as well and join it. Yes, Hank. I'd like to meditate to attune myself to earth, the earth element. Uh, you're going to try to attune yourself to the earth? Yes, All please. right, go ahead and roll. Oh, my. <laughs> Crit fail. No, I got a 17, but I don't know what I would add to it. Would that be just my wisdom? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. Oh, oh, that's my. amazing. Soft 20. All right, so soft 20. Uh, as you begin to attune yourself, you begin to feel that your life energy itself is in jeopardy. Being in this area, you feel there's a dark life force or presence of some sort within the hospital. And while you're trying to attune yourself, it disrupts. It just negates your ability to try to attune yourself to your element. Everyone, there's something very wrong with this place. Say everyone, but I'm the only person there with you, my guy. And Finn, he's strapped to the table still. Well, there's no, he's he's strapped to the table, of course. (laughs) Well, true, good point. <laughs> uh, while you guys are dealing with what's ever going on downstairs, Ralph Fira, you roll a crit fail, so the ghosty thing is going to happen to you! Uh, but it's not going to be near as bad as what happened to him. You notice that out of the corner of your eye, it's almost as if there was someone standing there and like kind of staring at you from around the corner. Oh, it's creepy. And as you turn around, you notice that there is just a black figure. It's a pitch black figure just standing standing at the corner looking at you and as you blink your eyes once it disappears and you hear just this loud crashing rolling down the halls down just down the halls towards the position where you are and you just hear this monster yelling and screaming (laughs) basically yeah aggressive curse word now what (laughs) you feel this just cold chill just shock up your spine oh. your your skin is tightening i'm feeling it now and you feel just goosebumps begin to run over your entire body what are you feeling you're beginning <laughs> you're in plain fear this is just fear in its most cons- controlled or concentrated form can I roll survival? <laughs> no, dead. <laughs> run. Um. How about that? Just okay. roll to run. Is this figure sentient? Well, the figure's gone after you blink your eyes, but as sentient as a ghost can. All right. Can I move silently and get the heck out of here? Oh, that's creepy. This oh, yeah. Creepy. Move silent. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I move silently is nine. 25. You got, you got a 16. No, you said that was a nice 25. 25. Correct. Yes, soft 25. Correct! <laughs> I need you to roll a uh, flat 20. <coughs> well, actually, a reflex. Reflex save. Okay, 15. All right, so uh, you successfully dodge what's going to happen to you. Thank God. As you begin to kind of crouch down as you're trying to sneak out of the room, the figure that was standing there has become more clear as it's a girl. It's a woman. And all black. The only thing that's really appearing to be anything of human is her head. But even that's looking very not all right. Her stuff. She appears out of the wall and goes to grab your hair. It's pretty and long, so. You hear, you kind of hear something strange coming from behind you as you roll forward, dodging whatever she was going to do to you. Uh, yes, Carlo. Uh, it was going to be one of the, like, when you said that it was a girl, I was going to say, would you like to play with me? That was completely irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Uh, she ain't talking. She's got a lot more of a, more important things on her mind. Yeah, she wants That's to. That's not what's coming down the hallway. Mind. You still hear this roaring, rolling destruction noise just coming down the hall, getting closer every second towards you. Okay. Run. Uh, actually, you four roll listens. Finn, Hank. Crillo, crazy, roll listens. Oh no. You crit fail. Oh, your, no. your, your, uh, Finn's ears are ringing. He oh, is deafened no. for about five minutes. I'm still stuck in the. I got metaphor. 18, my god. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so you got Same 18. Here. You got 18. You got 20. Uh, you got a nat 20 or a soft 20? Nat 20. So yeah, no, you three definitely hear this destruction coming from above, even through the cement ceiling and pieces of the floor. You guys hear from almost exactly where, you know, Ralph Fira had went up to go do. There's just this 
monstrous roar and yelling and screaming as there's just things being thrown from the hallway down the stairs. You just see a multitude of desks and cabinets flying down the stairs and rolling and crashing down to the ground below on your floor. This is horrifying. Yes, Aurelio. All right, so having been in hell in a while, do I see the ghosts that are, like, about to do stuff to Finn or, like, what, what's going on here? Uh... I would say, since you have more of a connection to a spiritual sense, you would see almost like an outline of what they looked like right before they kind of disappeared and dropped the stuff. You do notice that there's a very demonic, evil entity or energy in the hospital. Yo, what up? Since that... No, it's not you. Uh (laughs) Wait. Besides you, you're about on the same level of strength as Razio with your powers of a demon, so to speak. But no, so... Yeah, you can realize that there was some dark entity or something about that harm or do harm to Finn. What about me? Can they hear my oh, screams? Oh, yeah, no, that's that's the main concentrations up on the top floor. This was just an echo. This is bad, bad stuff going nope. on. Right <laughs> Nobody's there. gonna want to save me. All right, I'd like to. Uh, dang it, I hit the thing. I'd like to try to free Finn from uh, his table. You easily free Finn. It's just old, worn leather bindings. Dope. Nothing's really trying to hold themselves together. As soon as you got to the door, the, the entity was just like, nah, that thing kills ghosts and demons. I'm not even going to disappear. I'm out. I, I'm about to head out. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm going to head out. All right. See, so, yeah, you can fight these guys. You just use your demon flames. You, you, can, you can hurt them, too. You can use your key to harm them. They're just... I wasn't able to attune with my element. Yeah, but that's because of the another dark entity thing. Hey, go upstairs and see what's going on. I'm going to be right behind you. <laughs> All right, let's get going. I'll follow them. Oh, uh, you're getting... Aurelio's getting you off the bed. You're still strapped down, buddy. Oh. So, yeah, Aurelio, you get Finn off the bed very easily. The restraints are weak, worn. It's very simple to get him out. It's just kind of like a little tug. I mean, if Finn really would have tried, he could have got himself free, but Finn's Finn. <laughs> I was going to. You're right, though. I was going to. I just couldn't speak. All right. So, yeah, because they gagged you. All right. Let's head upstairs. Uh, all right. So, you guys are heading upstairs with Tank. So, I'm, I'm in front, I thought, just running because he said to uh, go on without him. All right. So, yeah. Hank, you get up the stairs first. You see this gigantic black mass. It's almost just a pure form of shadow rolling down the hallway and creating, making everything pitch black as it's throwing and spitting out everything down the hall at you and down the stairs. Gonna dodge. <laughs> Get to a safe spot. You kind of just see Ralph Ira huddled in a corner. <laughs> Trying to dodge everything too. She's like... Huh. I'm small. Can I put the bag over my head? The bag? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure you the one I'm still bag. wearing. Are they directly attacking me because of... No, 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 no. They're not directly attacking okay. you. That one demonic girl thing, yeah, was trying to attack you, but you managed to roll out of that. I don't think she's going to try anything right now, at least to you. Can I put on my necklace of extreme luck? Yeah, go ahead. Cool. Why don't you just not take that off? Yeah, what? <laughs> because it's magical and it has to recharge. Uh, Corolla, what are you doing? You said that there's undead in every room. Well, you also notice Obviously. some sort of sense of undead, yeah. You also know, like, probably notice what's going on. How do the doors open? In what way do the doors open? Most of the doors are off their hinges and broke, but for the multitude that are an A-wing still attached and for the couple that are in B-wing still attached, they're just rotted and rusted. So they kind of just open inwards. So via hinges. Yeah. I was wondering if they were sliding doors. I'm going to throw a shriek rock down the hallway. I want their attention. That's a really, really oh. dumb idea. It's Kroll that we're talking about. Let's do this uh, that's... I'm having fun here. Roll your sh- uh, roll for throwing the shriek rock, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he crit frailed a shriek rock. You hit yourself in the face with a shriek rock. <laughs> Oh, I just, oh, there it goes, make a deer roll. That, that's like the equivalent of confusion in Pokemon. <laughs> As you went to throw the Shriek Rocks, she we had leapt from your shoulder and started flight. So instead of you throwing it at Shisui, you turned it back and slammed it into your face. What? <laughs> uh, you knocked yourself unconscious. Oh, oh no! no! 
Uh, I'm not that strong. Uh, hey, hey, oh, no, you hey. Knocked yourself unconscious. You hit yourself in the head with a rock. With holes in it. Yes. That can mean nothing. You with the giant black mass over there. Hank, please, please. You're really strong. I help. Lift me up. Take me away. Please help. I'm scared. All right. You know what? Sure. I'll go ahead and comply with their request. I'll pick her up and we're going to book it. All right. Uh, your booty booty. Let's go racing booking it. <laughs> Down the stairs. You pick her up. I'm not going to make you roll for that because oh, okay. she's light and you're strong. And you guys are running for your lives down the stairs. <laughs> Make a reflex, Hank. Okay. Well, oh, no. Harold, uh, three. <laughs> the demonic girl appears in front of you and grabs you and throws you into the black mass with her. Where am I? Can I can I intervene in any yeah. shape or form? You guys are at the bottom of the stairwell. They're like at the between going up to the second part of the stairs. You know, um, can I, I can I interrupt here for a second? My uh, necklace of extreme luck adds plus four to dex rolls. So yeah, you got a three. I got a thirteen. You're four. I'm gonna do. Dang it! I thought it might help something. <laughs> am I am I right next to Raziel? Yeah, you guys kind of just saw this figure appear. Raziel and Finn, you guys see this person, Arazio would notice that some demonic entity. You, on the other hand, would just see a, a black figure standing there. You see Hank and Ralphira run directly into her as she grabs a hold of Hank and just tosses him back and up back into the stairwell towards the black mass of the shadow. I would like to throw one of my javelins at the girl. You could miss and kill us. No, they threw you back up. Oh, they threw. Okay. So you would like to initiate combat? Yeah. Roll initiative, Aresio. Thirteen. She rolled first. So, as you go to grab one of your javelins, you notice that she kind of just looks at you and does like that generic uh, jerky, you know, twitch walk weird thing that oh I hate that. Do oh I hate inside of oh. movies. As she kind of like jerk, walk, twitch monster moves at you. Oh, I hate that. It's like one of my least favorite things in horror films is when they twitch like that. Oh, oh you're gonna hate this. Yeah, and she uh, she tries to claw you. What's your armor class? My armor class? I think it's 18. 18. Okay, that's what I thought it was. I just want to be sure. You don't speak Dalton script. I'll write that. I, I just gotta oh, no. ask a quick question. Your initiative is two. Yeah, because no one else invested in Dex. Yeah, your Dex initiative is based on Dex. Anyways, yeah. so yeah, you feel like this cold chill kind of scrape up your armor as a long gash is formed from where her claws were. It did not penetrate through your armor though. There's just a large claw mark left on your armor, which is already dented and scratched and whatnot. So this is just another haughty battle scar for the orc. So do I still get to attack? Like, how does that work? Yeah, you get to attack. She didn't even hit your armor. She was one off from going through your armor, though. Oh, wow. These are some deep gouges in your armor. Can I ignite my great axe and strike in the same mode? Uh, You're going to ignite your axe and strike? Yeah. So are you going to fully enter demon form, or are you just going to ignite that? Just ignite at the moment. Just ignite, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, turning into the form would have took your action for the turn. But yeah, if you're just igniting, go ahead and enter with it. Yeah. Am I seeing all this? Oh, yeah, you're watching this. Soft 22. Yeah, oh, yeah, you definitely hit. Definitely hit. Like, you for sure hit. <laughs> like, you just stared at her and went, and you ignited your axe with that awesome flame, black flame glow, and she just, her eyes wide. <laughs> she, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. In the infernal, she goes, oh, no. That's <laughs> crap. That's a... Uh, Dang, name. Is that a D10 and then a D4 because of the fire? Yeah. Yes. Seven for D10, two for D4. So nine damage. Nine damage. Aurazio brings his axe around with such force that he slams it into her. The demon chick just goes flying up into the ceiling, cracking into what would be left of like a, like a ceiling panel. And the entire roof just collapses, falls on top of her. Oh, jeez. I think that's, that's extra like damage. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Minus two to her rolls. That was awesome! <laughs> she took an extra five damage. <gasps> I gotta ask, are Rafira and I dead? No. Or did we land in the black mass? Yeah, you did. Well, it's just right. shadows. What it's up, just Hank? 
It's just a wall of shadows. How's it going? You guys, have, I haven't really discussed what happened to you. Oh, okay, well. But, so, Aurizio, you're just staring at this demon chick that's now covered in ceiling ripple. Uh, I'm going to give you a attack of advantage. You have advantage. Attack again if you wish. Yeah. Overhead. <laughs> Overhead. <laughs> All right. Roll. <laughs> Imagine he rolls a crit fail. I, I get what you're no, I'm so cool right now. I can't fail. Crit fail. <laughs> you peaked so hard. <laughs> um, all right. Roll damage. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that... <laughs> <laughs> and then the D4 is a 4. She's dead. Oh, no. Times she is two. dead. <laughs> 16. Gonna crack the one of my guy. You feel this gigantic vacuum of air <laughs> as Orazio begins to charge his axe up into the air. As he begins to bring it down, you just feel this immense amount of heat begin to flare off of his axe. And for only a second, you notice that Arazio's horns begin to protrude from his head as his wings expand behind him, as it just adds more pressure and more force to this axe swing. And as he begins to bring the axe down in an arc, you feel as almost the air has been separated from the area where he, his axe is gonna land. As he brings the axe down and slams it onto the body of the demon, you notice that she just disperses. Yes! Her entire mass just burns up in black flames and turns to ash. But that's not the only thing that's happened. The pure force and shock of this axe just slamming into the ground has caused this gigantic just crack to form right down the center of the hallway. As it begins to spread up the wall, he splits the entire hall into two separate sections. About time I do something awesome. <laughs> I don't even think Crawlo can top that. Ralphira. Where the heck are we? <laughs> We're not falling. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, if the ceiling just got split. But yeah. Noodling uh, to the floor. So you begin to fall out of the shadow-like pocket. You guys can't, you guys couldn't really any see anything. You guys didn't even know each other. You were by each other. It felt as if you were in your own separate area where there's no sound, no air. You couldn't feel your body. You couldn't see. You were in complete just sense deprivation. You and Hank fall. Hank's still holding on to you. You see Orazio standing there with his axe in the ground as black flame is beginning to spread up and around him in a very interesting arc. It's almost as if his body is forcing this flame out of his axe. The raw strength and heat coming from where Orazio is and the direction it is pushing is beginning to melt the cement walls. What? How hot is my fire? Around 800 Celsius. Everything is turning into ash instantly. You guys have seen the black mist that is above you or shadow is afraid. It, you didn't think that inanimate clouds could feel fear, but the pure, raw energy coming off of Orazio has frightened and just struck pure fear into this demonic entity cloud as it begins to disperse. <laughs> wow. And I think that's where I'm going to leave it off today. Thank you guys for listening. This was episode eight. We only have two more episodes left of the series. What a sad, sad day. But if you like listening to us, make sure to talk to Mr. Glaza or leave good comments and posts on our advertisements for our show. And they may be glad enough to bring us back for another season. Would you guys be in for another episode, like another 10 episode season next semester? Sure. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I like that. All right, so uh, I thank you guys very much for listening. Wait, where's Crollo? Oh, well, I guess we have to wait until next time to figure out on Midnight D&D.
on Midnight D&D. &D. Yeah.